Welcome to CTSC Online. CTSC Online is an ongoing series of videos discussing various aspects of cybersecurity with specific application to NSF-funded cyber infrastructure projects. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF. Building a Cybersecurity Program, a tutorial for managers and PIs. In this video, we will be talking about how to manage the creation and maintenance of a cybersecurity program. When talking to various groups within the NSF-CI community, it is noticed that there are several common challenges they all face, or at least the same sets of concerns are often raised. Usually, the first is about the size of the project. Often, these are small projects with few staff members. The question is, how are they supposed to go about dedicating staff to cybersecurity when they are already needed to work on so many other things? Along with this concern is the related one about lack of knowledge in the area of security. If the staff is small, most likely they were brought in for skills in other areas and not because they were cybersecurity experts. And even if the project was looking for someone with skills in security, they probably discovered just how hard it is to find someone who has those skills. Another common challenge is not knowing where to start. Since most CI projects are developed for scientific reasons, security is not usually an important topic. Add to that the small staff and lack of expertise, and you have a situation where starting a security program can be a problem. Or you might have a program that you don't understand or didn't create. This could be a challenge too. Programs can't run themselves. They need to be maintained and refined over the life of the project. All of these issues are common, and all will prevent many people from attempting to start a security program. The challenges we just talked about can be significant handicaps in starting a program. Add to those challenges the limited budget that most projects have, and you get a formula for not doing anything in the security area. However, NSF is requiring more and more effort be put into security. You might also have experiences where you know firsthand the need for a program. So what can you do? What resources are available to aid you in developing a program? You're not as alone as you might think. There are resources available to you that you can take advantage of. Let's talk about some of those. The first area where you can look for support is within your own project. This might seem odd considering we just talked about how staff was one of the common challenges CI projects face when creating a security program. However, it is your staff that does all the work. At some point, a member of your staff will have the responsibility to run your security efforts. You should start talking to them now about it. There might be a person on your team who has interest in security, or even some knowledge about security. Don't be surprised if you find out the members of your team really have no idea how to start or run a program either. Most likely, your staff will have limited expertise in the area of cybersecurity. However, this does not mean you cannot ask them to learn about the topic and implement a program. People who understand how to use computers have the skills needed to learn how to implement a security program. Make use of your staff. Another resource your project has is that of the department you are associated with. Most likely, the department has some type of security program in place. They might have resources you can make use of. Whether it is people who have experience with the creation and maintenance of a program, or policies and procedures you can use, the department is a good place to go for help. If the department doesn't have an official program, it is often very common for departments to have some type of IT department that you can access. While system administrators are not necessarily security experts, they do often know about the topics and steps necessary to perform various parts of a security program. Check with your department and see how they can help you. It is a good place to start. Most likely, your campus has a group that is assigned the role of cybersecurity for the campus at large. 
you will probably be able to get a great deal of help from this group. The person you task with the responsibility of your project security program should view the people in this department as their new best friends. This campus IT group should be able to answer questions and possibly provide help with topics like risk assessment, forensic services, and information about regulations you might have to comply with. The campus is probably also providing some type of security services in the form of firewalls or monitoring. They probably also have policies and procedures that you can make use of. They can help you. They should be able to help you get your security program off the ground quickly and on the right path. You can also make use of the NSFCI community too. There are a number of projects that are in the same spot you are, trying to figure out how to create a cybersecurity program. Others have started down the path and can help you get going. You can find information about various projects at trustedci.org useful links. Also, CTSC is available to help. CTSC is funded by NSF to provide help to projects developing security programs. CTSC can provide this help in several ways. One way is through an engagement process. You now have an idea of what resources are available to you. The next question you might ask is, how do I put a security program together? If you do a search on the web, you will probably be presented with a number of frameworks and methodologies. There are NIST, ISO 27001, and Octave, to name just a few. These are all good sources of information and worth some of your time looking at. One thing you might notice while looking at them is how big they are, how involved they are. These frameworks were designed for large companies and government organizations. Following them too closely can quickly become overwhelming for a small CI project. That is why CTSC recommends a hybrid approach, one that is tailored more towards small and mid-sized projects, an approach that takes parts of these large frameworks and simplifies it for use and gears it more towards science-based projects. Putting together a functioning cybersecurity program is a lot of work. Usually, it is too much work for any one person. The best approach is to put a team together to tackle the effort. So, who should be on this team? What should the composition of the team look like? The first and most important person on the team should be a cybersecurity pro. If you don't have one, then this should be the person from your project who's been tasked with becoming the pro for the project. This is the person who will take the lead on these efforts and drive the program forward. It is important to note that this person should be given the authority that is needed to implement and see the program through. They should have the full support of project leadership. Leadership should have representation on this team also. While they might not be the driving force and lead the efforts, they are needed to provide inputs on goals and acceptable risks and also be made aware of plans and support those. The other group that needs representation for this team are the developers on the CI project. The program that comes out of this process will directly affect them. Their input will be useful in the development phase to let you know what kind of impact the planned practices might have. With the team put together, attention should turn toward actually getting the work done. Much of this information will be covered in more detail in other videos. The first thing that is needed is a good description of the system. Understanding what makes up the system is crucial to developing a good security program. This description would include information on the computers and network design that make up the project. Also, understanding use cases and workflows for the project. These help to understand how the users will be interfacing with the system. Who are the stakeholders in the system? Who are the users? What are their needs from the system? There will be a constant tension between their needs and the needs for security. The most secure system is one that has no access allowed to it at all. This, however, becomes unusable to anyone. Whereas, users will want total access and no hindrances to their efforts. 
They would prefer not to have to deal with usernames and passwords. But this then becomes a totally unsecure system. The middle ground has to be found, and this is why you need to understand their needs and what they are willing to tolerate. Also, what are management's goals in this project? What is the mission of the system? These will have an impact on what kind of security procedures you can put in place. These will be much like the stakeholders' views. They will potentially conflict with what security wants to do, and again, a middle ground needs to be found. One nice thing about developing a cybersecurity plan is that the timeline is flexible. Efforts can be scaled as needed. You don't need to have a perfect plan in place on day one. One of the first steps you need to take is that of developing a risk assessment. This assessment will help you to begin to identify threats that are a concern for your system and project. These threats would then become the risks that you prioritize for the system. The advantage of taking a risk-based approach is that it helps you focus on fixing specific issues. This helps you address the most pressing needs first and waiting on less important issues. Whereas, if you have a lot of time or extra help, you can include some of the lower priority items. In this video, we have looked at making determinations for the types of controls to put in place with the results of the risk assessment and the need to document the results. If you would like more help with building a security program, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website TrustedCI.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.